Hello everyone and thank you for coming to my channel, Dale Chanel's 48th World, where we do reviews. We're going to be doing the review on the Housewives of Atlanta that aired tonight at 8 o'clock on Bravo um, channel. Okay, um, basically the title was named um, The Regifting That Keeps On Giving. That's season 12, episode 5. And we're pretty much just going to go and get on right on into it. I apologize for my last video that I had that I was putting out on Dr. Heavenly. It was playing well when I actually released the video. But somehow it failed to play where you could have or hear the audio. The uh, clips were going. My mouth was moving, but there was no sound. So I do apologize for that. I don't know if I'm going to have time to try to redo that video or not. But... Um, I don't know, tef technical difficulties here. Technical difficulties here. But okay, let's just get on and get into this episode that really didn't hold my attention until towards the end. And I was pretty much on the money when I came to um, <coughs> really see if Cynthia was going to bring forth an effort to kind of stand on her feet, stand her ground or whatnot. But pretty much towards the end of the episode everybody was laughing at Cynthia uh for her talking about she can get everybody together if she need to if they step out of line and this that and third honey Portia laughed at her then Candy chimed in and then it was just a whole uh play by play everybody just didn't take Cynthia uh serious and Cynthia looked like she was left with egg hanging on her face <laughs> I was like girl Ma don't try to pump you up and it, it's just not happening but the best parts of the episode, because like I said, it was kind of lackluster. I kind of like how Portia stood up and she was going to take Kenya down in a sense. Like, nah, we ain't finna start no mess. We finna be uh, clear and transparent um, to... Hold on, guys. Excuse me, Jay. Move on. Okay, sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, Portia was like, nah, we finna be transparent. We ain't finna start this he say, she say type of mess. Nah, and, and, and uh, King was like, no, 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 no. You know, King is like, she always like to throw them rocks at that glass house, but she don't want to show that her hands was the ones that threw the first rock to make that uh, indention or that break of that glass. But I was here all four. I was like, go on home. Go on and get her, Portia. Just like you dragged her on the stage. <laughs> Portia said, uh-uh. We ain't finna start no rumors. We finna go out here and address this baby doll. How dare you try to give me a doll. Regift a doll. Beautiful rag doll. I remember buying some of those for my daughter when she was young as well as my dad brought a lot of them to her life as well. And I think, what did she call that doll? Was it Junie? Judy. She called her baby doll Judy. So that was funny to just see that doll still making its rounds in children's lives, especially baby girls. So anyway, honey, Portia took that doll. She was like, uh-uh, no way. We finna go address this issue with Eva. She left Kenya sitting there in that or standing there in that room and Honey, Portia went out there. She said, Eva, look at here. Look at here. You recognize this gift? Well, Kenya's giving it to me. I don't know why she's giving it to me, but she has some kind of a hang up. Y'all just need to squash this out. <laughs> and Eva, of course, was... Hold on, guys. Okay, you need to stop with your mess. Okay, got me sliding around in that doggone chill. But anyway... She pretty much told um, Eva that we were going to straighten out this mess between you and Kenya. And y'all need to get it together because I ain't taking this doll. She's pretty as can be, but that doll was meant for uh, baby Brooklyn. Brooklyn need that doll. So she was going around talking about energy and all these type of things. And Eva was backpedaling, talking about she didn't say that and this, that, and the third. But when actually, in actuality, she didn't. Um... Who said that about the bad energy? It was Cynthia that actually said uh, the energy was not uh, positive. It was kind of, you know, negative. And that's how it got put on Eva. So Eva really did not say it. it was Cynthia who said the bad energy. But she didn't call Cynthia out. She didn't say, oh, Cynthia said that. I didn't say that. So, but... 
the whole thing was uh, a bit disturbing because again Cynthia got shut down for trying to be proactive and trying to act like she had everything under control which she did Portia brought her baby when she was like I don't know this is not a baby party you need to find you know a babysitter or whatnot and she was right Portia could have found a babysitter she didn't have to bring Lauren I don't even know why we had Lauren there I mean either Lauren gonna be her babysitter her nanny and all this kind of stuff and her assistant and Portia needed to stop that fake fraudulent mess talking about she can't find nobody yeah she got uh Lauren there Lauren can do everything Lauren ain't got no job Lauren still being her assistant and and anything else she can do or be to get paid but lauren didn't have to come to that party you had a perfectly good babysitter right there lauren lauren could have stayed at home watched her baby and your baby and a thing could have been solved and it didn't have to be like no baby gym over there but we kind of got beside ourselves so let's go on back so we can get a little reference of where everything started because i kind of jumped to the favorite parts that i like and kind of pretty much forgot <laughs> about the rest of the story because like i said it was pretty much lackluster they had beat it down so bad in the summertime to where we kind of knew what was going on we all or whoever do youtube videos content creators we were catching every little story we could so all of it's like recycled in our minds at least in my mind it kind of seems like it's all uh, recycled and i'm just repeating the same stuff but this time we're actually getting to see the actual footage and we can kind of think back okay yeah i remember this um not experiencing deja vu we did videos on that okay okay but let's go on into that first scene we had portia sitting on the floor dressing baby um pj she's kind of like trying to comb her hair trying to fix bows in her hair and this thing portia has this love for bows and little girls and Whew, it, it, it was just, you know, a girly type moment. Then we got Eva. She's rolling down the street with her two older kids. And she's talking about, she smelled, uh, I guess, the son, the middle son that he may have, you know, uh, did the number two in his pants. He said, ooh, honey. She, she kind of called herself rolling down the windows and stuff. And I think her husband was on the phone. But once he heard that uh, boo-boo type of situation that was going on, he heard and clicked off, okay? Then we got Kenya, Kenya shopping for, I mean, I'm sorry, not Kenya, Candy shopping for Riley for her internship to New York because she's training, uh, I, I don't know, uh, is she in the 11th grade or 10th grade? I'm not really sure about Riley, but anyway, they played the part up. Uh, we finally got the information of how Riley got her internship with an attorney, an entertainment attorney, uh from um it came across uh candy um uh, asking her entertainment lawyer to see if riley could shadow him or her she didn't really give us uh the preference or the gender of who it was it really doesn't matter at this time but she was basically saying that her entertainment attorney agreed to let riley shadow them uh, for I guess the summer to give her some idea of how the law works in the entertainment field uh, because I guess Riley has some type of interest in pursuing that uh, career as a career choice so Candy's up in New York uh, she has a chaperone we ain't gonna say babysitter um, to come along uh, with her while she's gonna spend her time or her summer up there in New York so she has her a friend of the family that Candy's uh, trust so she's coming a little later on but we had Todd we had Kayla up in there um traveling with Riley to kind of drop her off at her new digs for the summer and to make sure everything was going pretty kosher but basically Candy just gave us a scene where she was trying to get some I guess a uh, formal casual type business attire for Riley while she was doing her extern or internship uh in new york then we got portia portia is calling cynthia she's talking to portia about um coming to her yearly barbecue thing that she does out at lake bailey and they're talking over the semantics of everything and the theme and the theme at the time was to wear red or you will get red okay so um portia was like oh yeah i want to come you know uh, but I don't have a babysitter. <laughs> and the first thing that came to my mind, yeah, you do, your mama or Lauren. Uh, or do you have any other cousins running around there that could definitely fit the bill to sit there and 
take care of your daughter for those couple of hours, you know, while you, you know, kind of digress and get into the groove of being back in society and interacting with your friends or your co-workers or however you want to look at them, okay? But um, she's kind of saying, I don't know, I, I, I'm going to try, but I don't know if I'm going to have a babysitter or this, that, and third. Or, you know, I still haven't found a nanny. And I'm like, Portia, what are you doing with your life? Because that nanny situation, even though you were going through that thing with Dennis or whatever, still shouldn't have negated your obli uh, your obligation to find a nanny. Perfect choice, your sister, Lauren. I don't think she's doing anything. She's not in school. You know, I, I don't know what's going on because we see her here and there, but mostly on the show. So I'm like, mm, okay, Portia. <laughs> We're going to leave that alone. But anyway, she was saying she still wants to bring the baby with her because she don't trust everybody. And I guess if she don't have her major go-to people, which is her number one, her mom, then she don't think she's going to be able to do anything. But it just is what it is. And then Portia goes on and throws shade uh, saying, well, uh, Eva is coming and is she bringing her kids? And then they would just do a light shade. Like, well, you know, Eva have to uh, kind of check you out because basically she don't want everybody about around her kids. She don't play that. <laughs> homie don't play that. Okay, homie the clown is, is that much. But she was just making reference on how Kenya had, uh, well, she felt Kenya was not a good spirit to be around her children. And in essence, it was Cynthia was the one who put out that lie that Kenya felt or Eva felt that the spirit around Kenya wasn't that good. So, Cynthia hasn't fessed up to that. But that's just how it is. And that's pretty much it of uh, the little going scenes they had rolling prior to the scenes taking place. We were going into that first scene. We got Portia doing exercise with baby PJ. Now, they call it a jitterbug type of club or, or exercise program that you do with your babies almost like uh what is it called Lamaze or whatnot and Portia out there trying to twerk with her baby I'm like oh lord Portia could you have not given us something else other than this to film but okay we'll work with it so anyway Kenya shows up in heels I'm like was this a play date was this something synchronized that they both got together and they was just gonna meet each other Kenya was just running a little late type of scenario but anyway, Kenya coming now, you know, half moving because she didn't want to do too much to upset baby Brooklyn. But it don't look like anything can really upset baby Brooklyn. She's a uh, beautiful baby. She has a lot of personality. And I'm like, uh, Candy, honey, she must get it from her dad. <laughs> because uh -uh, if you ain't reading somebody, Kenya being nasty to them, I, I don't see where baby girl gets it from. Okay, but, you know, that's just me and Candy trying to feel things out here about uh, where Brooklyn gets her little personality, her pleasing personality, but she just seems she looks like everybody. Everybody's funny to her, honey. But anyway, um, they go, and um, Portia still trying to drop it like it's hot on the dance floor or the exercise floor, and little PJ gets either hungry or disgusted with her mom because, you know, it's probably was her nap time. She didn't want to be stirred with the music, uh, the people around her. She didn't know them, and she was just going to act up, okay? I guess you want to call her, that's Dennis, baby. <laughs> she acting up like Dennis probably would have been doing. But anyway, Pusha just said, oh, let me go. Let me get off the dance floor. And, of course, Kenya, you know, needed her filming time, and so she came on off the dance floor to my Brooklyn want to check on her little friend. Which Kenya uh, wanted to get out of them damn heels she was sporting. But it is what it is. She has on some wedge heels trying to come to a baby size exercise class. Come on, Kenya. But anyway, that's Kenya. She's extra all day, every day. 365 days of the year. Uh, 24 hours a day. Okay, but they go in and um, she goes to see that Portia has pulled out a bottle for baby PJ. PJ was hungry. That's why she was doing all that fussing. So she going to sit down and just talk about, you know, things here and there and then she goes into like uh in a confessional sense uh what she's t telling Portia you know she's having a little marital problems here and there and Portia's just looking so god dog get concerned I'm like damn they got like they best friends or something but okay they had that little thing at Brooklyn's birthday party or coming out party and they bonded so okay I guess that's where we're going with this I don't know but she goes on to pretty much tell Portia that her love life is uh sexless and she ain't even gonna give her the months 
which she told us on the last episode was pretty much six or seven months. Her and Mark has not had any type of intimacy in their relationship. So she's kind of missing it and she's calling herself tearing up. But this time I didn't see no tears drop from them lovely eyes. No, I didn't. She even messed up uh, Portia's baby cloth. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll get you a new one. <laughs> And I would have told her, oh, yes, you will. <laughs> oh, yes, you will. Okay. But, you know, Portia's reassuring her everything is going to be fine. Uh, but, you know, with y'all living so far apart from each other, he don't come to town that much. Y'all not getting no sex in? Uh, yeah, that's a telltale sign that something needs to give before y'all get gone from each other. Okay. And be co-parenting for the real. Uh, then we got, um, Kenya not really wanting to go back to the exercise class when I'm like, maybe they just edited and cut this stuff. Cause I, it seemed like y'all were just on the flow for five minutes with the baby and, uh, the babies. And then you're going to like have to go, uh, from the floor to feed baby PJ. And then y'all talking about y'all finna call it a day. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Okay. The editing scene of reality TV. Okay, then we go into that second scene. We got Candace in New York on behalf of her uh, daughter um, and her attorney, her entertainment attorney. She's bringing Riley, dropping her off. She's going to spend the summer up there in New York trying to get used to and get her footing around um, the entertainment business as an attorney. So Candy, with all her strings she pulled or whatnot, she got her baby girl a nice internship where she'll be spending the summer uh, learning about the ins and the outs of attorney law with the, within the entertainment field. And like I said, um, she had a lady by the name of Jasmine come and occupy that second bedroom uh, apartment that Riley's renting out for the summer, or I should say Candy's renting out for the summer for Riley. And uh, like I said, Jasmine's more of a chaperone. She's older. She's more mature. She's dependable. And I knew for some reason Candy was not going to let uh, her baby girl sit up there and um pretty much you know be by herself and then have an additional room now nah, okay i forgot about kayla was gonna be up there with her because i think kayla's like five years or four years older than riley which that would have been a okay setup it would gave them more time to bond with each other for them to be half sisters but you know it is what it is go figure all right but anyway they show some scenes uh evidently riley don't have no money on her um, I don't know if Candy, well, yeah, Candy does give allowances, I believe, and Kayla's taken back, like, you still get allowances? Shoot, I had to work. I had to work for my money. Ain't nobody give me nothing. I, I know that's right, Kayla. Show it, show it how it really works out in the real world, okay? But your mama don't have a, a wealth of money flowing out her behind, or she's invested her, uh, hard work in, have basically been able to save a wealthy type of an account for you to partake of at your age that you're needing it right now. But I salute Kayla. Yes, honey, do your thing. Get your own money. You know what it takes to be out there on that grind, uh, trying to solidify them ends and make things happen for yourself. So, Todd, I'm looking at you sideways again. I mean, it's good to have your child understand what it is and what it means to have work under their belt and you know they're not privileged in that way but i mean you ain't been trying to like pad her account you know like 500 here every two months if not every month you're supposed to be making a pretty good decent salary from what candy had said at least that's what she said on my previous video that i did my uh article on her and you and she telling you to jump and she got you and all this that and the third and you you can't spread the love with your uh only child I mean, is that your only child? Other, I mean, I mean, don't count A's. I'm just talking about from before you met Candy. If that's true, she's your first. She's your firstborn, babe. Why you not um getting that girl some ends? So I was very upset with Todd in that fashion. Then Candy in her confessional, she's going to try to uh, sweeten it up or, you know, try to make us not think so bad about Todd. Talking about, you know, I try to get Kayla money. See, Candy ain't sitting right with me. Hey, you ain't got to see nothing. If that's your stepchild and you said when you married Todd, you treating that child just like your own, honey, I would have been at the bank 
said, okay, we're going to go to Best, uh, or not Best Bank, but Bank of America, where, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, whatever bank of my choosing, we're going to put your name on it, my name on it, and anytime you need some money that's not already routine, routinely going to be in your bank every month, the set fee that I have, uh, let me know, baby. Let me know, because I got you. If your parents ain't acting right, I'm your parents, too. Because if anything happened to your mom and dad, I'm sure you're going to be looking forward to me to try to step in. You know, that's my job. That's my role. I got the ends. So I'm kind of surprised that Candy, you know, talking all that, you know, know it's about Todd can't. Todd ain't got your bur uh, purse strings. He don't have all your bank account information, I'm sure, on some of them accounts, Candy. Wink, wink, girl. All right, so don't tell me what this man uh, telling you can't do for his daughter. I mean, y'all are married, right? That makes her your stepdaughter. Because if that's the case, what are you going to do about uh, Baby Ace? He's going to say, Baby Ace don't need that kind of money in his bank account that you choose to put in his bank account each month. Child, please, okay? But I was like, Ugh, you know, Todd, here we go again. You know, you want all the money for yourself. And she trying to, you know, make it right, make it do what it do. And you trying to take Po Kayla money. So I'm like, mm, I'm looking at you sideways now, Todd. I'm looking at you sideways. But anyway, leaving that situation, we go to Riley is not understanding what an ice tray is. Okay? She's asking how she's going to get ice for her drinks. So I'm like, Candy, what are you teaching your child, honey? What What are the benefits are you teaching her? Did you have a maid prior to you and Todd getting married? I mean, I know uh, Riley was young and stuff, but she had to know what an ice tray was, boo. She do go to the refrigerator and partake of food, or is everything ordered and brought to her room on a silver platter? I, I mean, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. I mean, I, I thought Riley was a well-rounded individual, but it seems like you don't got her to uh, primp and prop to where she don't know the basics. I mean, truly the basics. But um, anyway, and then Riley was talking about where Kayla was saying, uh, <coughs> you got to start making your own bed and this, that, and third. And Todd was saying, you know, you got to tilt people when they come and do things for you. And she's like, well, what money? I ain't got no money, you know. And I'm like, okay, hopefully can can work that situation out, leave her some money. Well, she can. If she's going to partake of these people doing stuff for her, yes, she needs money to where she can tip them, okay? Uh, or she need to do them by herself, for herself. But when she said that she don't even clean out her own, she don't clean out her own bathtub? I mean, when she taking a wash out, wash out, do she clean out her sink, Candy? Because evidently she don't clean out her bathtub and then you're going to sit up there or the shower. And then you're going to talk about, oh, well, we have a maid to do all that. Damn, that maid, she needs to know the fundamentals. Because if that money goes, which sometimes it happens to the rich and famous, they go broke, they go bankrupt. It just is what it is. You mean you're going to leave this girl without knowing how to do the basis? I mean, do she know how to boil an egg? Candy girl, you done definitely made this girl weak in that sense of, you know, learning the basics. She needs to know how to make her bed. She needs to know how to wash her clothes. She needs to know how to wash dishes. She needs to know how to pay bills. She needs to know how to balance a checking, a, a checking account, her checkbook. I mean, these one-on-one -on -one things that you need to be teaching her, that's, that's, tell, that's a telltale sign saying you ain't been there with, with a candy. The world can't teach her everything or they'll become and take advantage of her and take everything from her. So I need you, candy, to do your due diligence, baby. Just because you're providing for them, having a wealth of money left for them and this, that, and the third. But if they don't know how to do the basics, then people are going to take advantage of them. Period and point blank. <coughs> but anyway, moving on from that situation. Because like I said, it has to work itself out. And hopefully, you know, after, you know, many people have dissected the episode and put in their uh, responses. And you see, or your family members be like, can you ain't teach that child that? Girl, she ain't cleaning out her own toilet commode. Does she have her own bathroom? You mean tell me she ain't cleaning out her tub? You got people cleaning out? Girl. But anyway, that just is what it is. We're going to move on. Then we got Nene. She's having a luncheon for Marlo. 
I don't I don't know if it's a peace summit luncheon or at least that's what Marlo feel. <laughs> Marlo feel. You did this for me after walking out on me on our last encounter, girl. Thank you. And she like, girl, ain't about to stand you. Come on in here. She said, I just got tired of you talking, talking about apologize, apologize, apologize. I tired of that shit. But anyway, little do uh Marlo know she's invited Yvonne over and they go on and have like a little girl talk, girl banter. And uh, Yovana is basically saying, um, hello, uh, Cynthia is definitely like what Nene says. She is definitely two people. She's a Jekyll and then she's a Hyde. So, yeah, you're going to have to watch out for her because we were hanging out together or whatnot. Or we was at some function together. And I think it was she was over at Cynthia's Wine Beller, wine, wait a minute, wine Cellar uh, company over there that she's hosting at uh, her wine shop or whatever. And she was saying, you know, Cynthia was talking about you like a dog, child. She was just talking about you, talking about you, talking about you. And it wasn't any good, honey. She was saying that Nene was telling her that uh, she Nene was toxic. She was a burden. And I'm like, damn, where you getting all this tea from? And Marlo saying the same thing. What, girl, do you have evidence that you can back this up with? You got receipts. She said, yeah, I sure do. I got receipts, honey. I like, ooh. Child, do Cynthia know that girl? Do Cynthia know you was over there recording her? Mm -mm. It's gonna be hot, and it'll probably be hot the last couple of episodes of the season because they ain't gonna show it to us now. They ain't, but anyway, we move on now. Nene says, You know, you gotta understand there's a cent, cent, like 50 cent, the ratchet cent, the hood cent, that's cent, cent. Now, the cent. The uh, that y'all get a chance to see that she's mixing and mingling with and interacting with everybody through the uh cast, that's the one y'all know. But I know both of them. And since sent don't come out on me sometime. Y'all talking about I need to apologize to her? Nah, y'all need to meet sent sent for yourselves and then y'all see where I'm coming from. And I got more common sense than y'all do about Miss Cynthia. All right. So, um, I don't forgot who brought up the situation of, um, Cynthia's barbecue that she hosts at her house every year since she's had uh bake late bake wait a minute Blake Bailey and you know to our surprise everybody got invited itself for Nene <laughs> I'm like girl now Marlo if she was T on top of T trying to be the OG and I'm like girl let's go crash that party <laughs> That's, I'm like Max on Living Single Child when Khadija and Regime weren't really feeling each other. And she invited everybody except for Khadija. And I've been like, Max, let's go crash the party. Let's go crash the party, girl. And then we can both leave. We'll just take all her food and then we'll leave. <laughs> but anyway, they didn't do that. Okay, that would be my pun. So we move on to scene three. We got Portia comes home from work and she's, you know, greeting her mom and trying to not be too loud because the baby's sleeping and you know her mom's coming downstairs and saying honey how was you know work have you found a nanny you know and all this great stuff and she like mom i don't know i don't know honey i i just don't, I don't trust everybody and she said well i'm gonna have to be a part of that interviewing process because sometimes you just be a little bit too picky and right now you need a nanny you need somebody to take care of miss baby girl and, and, and so we can move on with our lives. And I didn't know she had a business or whatnot. But Portia goes on to say, you know, I know you got your own business and you ready to get back to work and da, 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 whatever. But I'm like, honey, you will be paying me and then some because I have baby PJ over at my crib or wherever I have my establishment. And then it'll be decked out, uh, you know, like a little baby nursery. I'll be taking care of her and I'll be getting my other money and I'll be getting money from you. It'll just be money, 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 money. Mm -mm -mm. Money, 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 money. Yes, honey, we'll be getting that money from both entities. But anyway, that's just my pun intended. You know, it just is what it is. Um, and then she goes and tells her mom that Cynthia's having a party and she wants to go, but you know, it's just this nanny ideal and picking the right one. And like, I mean, um, Portia, give it a break. Either pick somebody from your family or hire somebody, or better yet, quit all your entities and just stay at home, okay? Let Dennis figure it out, okay? But you know, you don't want to do that. You know, you want to be that moving and shaking, you want to continue making your money, you want to still be interacting with celebrities out there, gossiping about celebrities on the show and putting your own opinion here and there. Yes, you know you still want to do that. You bought that life still. You don't want to give it up just to be PJ's mom full time. Ah, uh, no, nah, that ain't you. You know it ain't you, girl. But anyway, uh, leaving that situation, 
Candy comes over to pick up, uh, what's her name? Kenya. And they pretty much, you know, go back and forth about why they should go, why they shouldn't go. You know, uh, Cynthia saying she couldn't bring her child and all this kind of crap going on. And, you know, she like, well, where you go over there, dog? You know what I'm saying? She said, oh, oh I'm re-gifting this dog. She can't say, uh-uh, no, girl, you being too extra, you being too much. Leave that dog him, girl. Leave that dog. Get that dog to Brooklyn. Because you know that girl ain't doing nothing to that dog. And that, gr that girl. And she's like, uh-uh, I'm getting rid of this dog. Like, it had some jinx on it or stuff. I like Again, can you doing too much? But she's gonna have her team tour her team out there, and they're gonna be doing. I'm like, damn, you, you felt that bad way about it? Then you should just th throw the doll away. Or you know, if you really didn't feel no kind of way about it, you just didn't want to give it to your baby girl. You should have gave it to a charity or some, or some, uh, of some type of form, okay? Or a shelter that houses uh women that are displaced at the time, but they have children. I mean, come on, can you? I had to take it to a daycare center and see if they wanted it. But, you know, it's just ill with it. I had what you could have did was took back and got your money and then got something you really wanted. Then that would have been the true tea. Okay, but anyway, moving on from that situation. Uh, we go to uh, Cynthia Bailey's party because they leave after that. Can you check some baby brick and make sure she's settled and all that kind of stuff? And they leave and go to the function. We got Eva. She's the first to arrive. She brings some gentleman with her. Which I don't understand why it wasn't a man type of event. It was just strictly for women, I guess, children. <laughs> but anyway, she brought her little uh, a guy with her, friend, I guess, who knows. And um, Cynthia pretty much feeds her, try to tell her what was going on and how Portia wanted to bum guard her about bringing her baby and this, that, and the third, and then, you know, she was very adamant, and she had to go back and call Kenya and tell Kenya, yeah, you could go on and bring your baby, because Portia is, you know, insisting that she's not coming unless she's bringing her baby or whatnot, and I mean, if you felt that strongly about it, so you should have said, well, I'll see you next, uh, barbecue, but you ain't bringing no baby over here, because we're gonna be drinking, we ain't got time to be worried about no infants, and, and making sure they cool and all like that, I don't have no nannies over here, I don't have no, mm -mm. it ain't conducive for no young person, we're gonna be laughing, we're gonna be hollering, and probably twerking here and there, drinking, you know, our cares away, no, nah, you can't come, so I'll see you next year, boo, <laughs> now, that would have showed me that you were standing up for yourself and you weren't letting people run all over you and taking advantage of you but again that was a great opportunity for you to solidify this new Cynthia to us but again you fold it you fold it you fold it girl moving on from that situation uh, Kenya Candy finally show up. More guests are showing up. Got Tanya there. We got Yvonne there. We got all these things. And, you know, they decide they're going to go on out there because it's too many people getting crowded. So they want to take it out to the balcony and just enjoy that scenery and, you know, pretty much eat their food and stuff. So Yvonne's going in, you know, telling the group, you know, don't talk about Nene and this, that, and the third. And she's going on telling Cynthia, you know, you talked about her like a dog, you know, trying to make it out. That when Marlo could, well, Marlo wasn't there yet at the time, I don't think. But anyway, they tore into Tanya's ass like it, I mean, Tanya's ass, uh, Yvonne's ass like it wasn't nothing. And I'm like, oh my God, Cynthia, you're being too abrasive. And it, it's all just didn't seem genuine at all. Because she said, I don't know if you came, uh, you befriended me just to get some tea on me, but I could say whatever I want. I don't know if you recorded me and this, that, and third, or you took that what we said to Nene. And now Nene's going to be doing all that. You know, she was just doing her neck and rolling, messing with her hands. And I, I like Cynthia, sit your ass down. But then again, she would sit down, y'all. But I'm like, hush, Cynthia, hush, because you just get all, all out the way. I ain't even want to hear what you had to say because it wasn't making sense. It wasn't making no sense. It almost like it was just pre recorded in your head, and this was the opportunity for you to just spray bullets out your mouth and thinking it was going to hit everybody or one particular target but it just flew all over the room just flew all over the room and hit nobody because even Yvonne wasn't even scared about what you were saying to her okay but I like mm, Yvonne you could have did better you could have did damage control but you know it is what it is uh but like I said Cynthia was just being told to shade I'm like why you gonna bring Yvonne or ask Yvonne to come and then you gonna act like she's some spy for Nene I'm like you the one invited her Cynthia how stupid that is girl you just keep coming up with some mess and it keeps throwing back in your face or blowing up in your face. It's just too much, Cynthia. You're just doing too much. Okay, then we leave that situation. 
<clears throat> uh, Kenya calls herself going to give Portia the dog once Portia finally show up with her entourage. She got a nanny or somebody that's kind of like not put on camera. They're kind of like blurring her out or whatnot. And then you got Lauren there. I'm like, couldn't one of them have kept your child, Portia? Couldn't one of them have kept your child? Why are we getting Lauren all this camera time? Is she going to be a friend or sister of the friend? she going to get a paycheck that we don't know about? Girl, have you wrote it in your contract that she need to get a paycheck if she's filmed? Girl, I'm like, ugh. Lauren can be your nanny, your caregiver for the baby, your assistant, all of that, Portia, just pay her a nice salary. 40000 should be good a year for her. And and just call, call it a day. Please, call it a day. This is too stressful for me. But anyway, um, Kenya waits till she gets settled, this, that, and the third. She said, okay, baby, this is your, your gift from me to baby girl, PJ. Okay, getting her uh, refurbished gifts. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, we need you to go to the store. We need you to go and pay for something that haven't been re-gifted. Something you actually picked out. Brand new with a tag. Bring it to me and I'll give it to my daughter. And she tried to give Portia that gift. She's like, uh-uh, I recognize this gift. This gift was for baby Brooklyn at her coming out party. Why are you giving this to me? It's a cute doll. It's a nice doll. It's an expensive doll. But it wasn't meant for my child. It was meant for another child. She's like, hop on, where you get this dog from? <laughs> like it was hot off the press or something. Anyway, Portia just dismissed all that mess. She's like, uh-uh, we ain't finna do this. Not today. We all grown around here. We got children. So she pretty much put Kenya on blast when it took the information to uh, Eva. And they took it to the porch, honey. And that's all she wrote on that situation. Then we got uh, Marlo. She finally comes in. She comes in, she's late but fabulous, you know, that, uh, what do you call it, fashionably late type of stance Marlo was trying to jet in on. But, honey, as usual, she cleared the house. She got in a little argument with Eva after Kenya then was going in an argument. But I think Kenya lost her place. She was fussing with Eva, but Eva wasn't giving her the energy that she needed back. Pretty much Eva won that round against Kenya. Uh, and then Kenya tried to like bring Cynthia mess in it of something they had a good while ago that her and Eva was uh, fussing about, about telling uh, something to Nene or they was trying to put Nene in the shit and whatever. But, you know, Kenya, she deflected and went to another subject that had nothing to do with it. And, you know, pretty much Eva shut both of their asses down. She said, I got to go. <laughs> I don't like messing Marlo. Marlo ain't never had no children, so she don't know what she's talking about. But I'm finna bounce, Cynthia. This is your thing. Smooch is baby, but hell no, nah, I ain't got time for this. So she bounced. And Kenya was sit sitting there looking like a fool. She didn't make that play. Then she's gonna try to get on uh, Cynthia about everything. And of course, she just totally tore into Cynthia. And even Candy was like, nah, damn, girl, you ain't gotta be jumping on that girl like that. You know she ain't all about nothing, you know, girl. And honey, by the time Marlo got a, got finished with Kenya, <laughs> it was all she wrote. So I'm like, Kenya, you met your match on this episode. Eva told you down as well as uh, Marlo told you down. Okay. But that's all I had, y'all, for the Real Housewives of Atlanta that aired for today. Uh, episode 5, season 12. And it was uh, called The Regift. That keeps on giving, honey. It's just like a fruitcake. <laughs> you keep on giving and passing around until somebody likes it. And they don't care who bought it. It's just they love fruitcake. And then they get the lucky uh, re-gifting of that package that nobody else wanted. Okay? But that's all I had, guys. Y'all get down in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about this episode. Was it lackluster? Was it all that you were thinking it was going to be? Or was it just total file? Or did you like it? You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I didn't like it till towards the end. It was just lackluster. And I guess most of the episodes they're going to give us, it's going to have its peak points. And then it's just going to, you know, flatline for a couple of episodes till it gets down to the nitty gritty and towards the reunion. But it was okay. I kind of like Marlo. I told you Marlo needs a peach. She really does. If we're not going to see Nene clown on Kenya, Kenya clown on Nene. Um, Marlo's the best fit because she can get everybody shut down and towed down. <laughs> she got rid of fake and fraudulent Eva and then she started working on Kenya trying to be too much, trying to be too extra. So that's all I had, guys. Y'all enjoy y'all evening and I'll be back with another review for Marriage to Medicine. Okay, take care. Love y'all. Bye.